All but one of the semifinals is set now, and Game 7 will decide who is going to be the other team in the East. That's the Toronto Morleys and the Binghamton Devils right here on LeagueGaming.com and the YouTube channel. Hi, everyone. T-Sibs with you. Joining me today is uh, Siege, Advanced Human, and Kepler, and they will help me call the game tonight. It's Game 7 between Toronto and Binghamton, and uh, we're getting down to the semifinals here, close to uh, the last four. And these two teams have been battling back and forth. It was not a surprise that this wound up going to a game seven as they've kind of gone back and forth in, in these games a bit. And uh, two teams that are fairly evenly matched. And we, we bring in Kepler and Siege and Advanced. And first one out who wants to talk about this. These, these two teams, uh, you know, may, may wind up really uh, battling something big time next round in, uh, in the Eastern Finals. But... You know, right now, they're, they're two teams who are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> I, I think every every team at this point is pretty evenly matched in the East. I mean, and, and that's part and parcel to the playoffs, right? I mean, you, you know, you, you get down to the final, you know, final four, eight teams. You know, you're not you're not playing the bottom of the of the league. You're playing teams that were good enough to uh, to get to the playoffs. So, you've got to expect some sort of a battle. Uh, you know, the other that other final of Charlotte and and the Phantoms uh, showed that the Checkers are, are are a pretty damn solid team. And you know, whoever wins this one tonight is going to go up against them and and have a, a really tough go of it. But you know, these uh, these two teams have uh, have gone a bit back and forth in this series. Uh, you know, the Devils winning the first two, then Toronto winning the next three and, and seemingly having a chance to close out game six, but then losing that one by a score of two to one. And uh, and again, we, we wind up having to uh, to go to a game seven tonight. But, you know, you, nothing really jumps out when you look at the stats of these two teams advance. You know, you, you're not you're not seeing uh, big, big numbers by the team. You're not seeing big numbers by individual players on either side, really. No, it's it's pretty. I don't want to offend anyone, but it's pretty mediocre at its at its finest. Um, there's there's a couple things that that could really influence the game: time on attack and face off. I always I'm I'm a big fan of face offs, so I've never been the greatest at it. But I I, I like watching who's winning them, and it it can really change the outcome. And other than that, goalies and defense not doing stupid things and pinching. When we talk about the goaltenders a little bit, and uh, on the side for Toronto tonight, Fishy Dangles uh, going uh, going for for uh, Toronto tonight. Uh, 500 record during the regular season, and and so far in the playoffs, uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously not doing too bad, but uh, but somebody who can come through, you know, seemingly in a game seven and, and be important to their team. Uh, six and one in in seven games played uh, in the playoffs. One point one goals against. Obviously, uh, playing extremely well on the other side for the Devils. Lakin in at five and zero, oh, uh, ninety one point two save percentage, under a goal a game uh, goals against average. So, uh, two very solid goaltenders going tonight. And you know, I would think defense uh, seems to be prevalent. You know, we we've seen low scoring games by these teams so far this series. Any reason to think that's not going to happen again tonight? No, I, I absolutely think it's going to be a pretty low-scoring game, and I expect the goalies to kind of, like, essentially be the deciding factor. And if that's the case, then I, I would give the game to the Devils. Really? I'm, I'm, I'm with Siege on this one. Um, I mean, looking looking at the two goaltenders, they're both both very solid, and I mean, obviously they both make the saves they need to make taking this uh, taking this series to seven. But um, Lekkinen has been, I mean, he's been on all year. And looking at the numbers, I mean, they're they're slightly better than Fishy. Uh, I mean, with a two and a half goals against and an eighty two save percentage for for Lekkinen, but it's not like he turned it on just come playoffs time. He's he's shown that he's known what he's doing all year. So um, I think the, the slight edge here has to go to is the, the skater stats are very similar. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed to be honest with you with these goalie stats. Cause if you look at just in the regular seasons, they're, they're, they're decent stats. You can't call any of these guys a schlub, but once they hit playoffs, it's, it's, 
it's like they just start poking their butts with steroids. They're on like a different <laughs> level of, of, of saves and it's, it's madness. It's absolute madness. We see a lot of goaltenders wind up, you know, having a pretty good season and, and, you know, seemingly doing okay. And then uh, I, I think there's something to be said for going to one goaltender, maybe uh, more than the other uh, during the series and, and that person getting more time on ice and, and, you know, with it being a playoff game, just some guys in net wind up really standing out in the playoffs. We've seen that pretty much every season. There's always somebody you can point to and say, Hey, you know, uh, yeah, you know, back in season four, Moose and and Trash Clown, you know, got to the finals, and both goaltenders were extremely hot and and doing incredibly well during the playoffs. And I think it's a lot like the real game. If you've got a goaltender who's playing really well and making some game saving, uh, you know, saves, then again, I think it can carry you just like uh, just like in the real game. Absolutely, and it's also kind of discouraging when you're. When you're trying to put some goals in, you're getting some cross creases actually through, and and that guy just somehow gets across like that. It, you start questioning what what to do. You start dumping around more. Start trying to doing some silly wraparounds, and just hope for the best. And it it can really it can really hurt your flow. The rest of the lineup uh, to go over what to, Toronto has going tonight. It's uh, Rob forty three forty three Prodigy and Cred up front. With uh, Berikoff on left D and Beck Bronson on right D, as we mentioned, Fishy in net uh, tonight for the Marlies. On the other side, Boog on left wing, Chowski the center, and Tough Cuts on right wing. Peace and Mafia 91 on D, and Lakin in, in net. Um, you know, uh, it, it's interesting because I've, I've spent a lot of time away from the league this year, and so there are definitely names in here I'm not overly familiar with, and, and some that have been around for a while. Uh, like Berikoff and Chowski, you know, I know these guys pretty well. Um, the level of, let's just get off a little bit on this matchup and just talk about the level of quality of player in the AHL this year. A lot of new faces, a lot of guys wound up up in the NHL this season, so a lot of new faces wound up in the AHL. Uh, anybody see a drop-off in, in the quality of play in Season 6? Has that been something that has been noticeable, or, or has it, you know, remained pretty high? I, I think there's been a little bit of a drop off with um, LG kind of enforcing that that rule of um, you know NHL caliber players can't take management. Yeah. It's 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 pulled a few of the better guys out of the league. Right. Um, Jack Duke being one of them. Um, but the, the talent's a little down than what it has been. But um, there's a lot of guys that many people don't know stepping in and playing well. Um, like a lot of the the Marley's roster. Um, yeah, I, Bingham, I would. Go ahead. You see, you see, Binghamton has has some players that have been around a little bit that people know. Um, Boog ninety one. I mean, a lot of people probably remember him as Boogie Man. Everybody, I mean, majority of people know who Chowski is. Yep. Yeah. I think it's it's a, a little bit of a step down, but not too bad. I think double tagging also kind of hurt this because I just have a suspicion that there were some guys that were double tagging that were in the AHL in the last couple of seasons that were just, you know, they obviously don't belong there because they're super good. So the crackdown may have may have hurt that as well. I can't confirm or deny that. I just it's a theory. Yeah, there are definitely a bunch of factors that I think uh, have changed. You know, there was always going to be this change eventually in. You know, in the in the rosters and the players, a lot more guys coming in. We saw the CHL expand out last season to 60 teams, and again this season. So it's uh, you know a lot more guys are coming on board to LG now in in season six, and um, y you're going to see you know you're going to see quality. You would think rise to the top, and uh, but I think the season was was interesting, Siege, in that I, I you know I think there's a general thought that. You know, maybe a lot of AHL guys who went up may or may not have belonged in the NHL. Maybe we're almost ready, but not quite. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how much uh, you guys believe in that, but, uh, you know, do you think that's a factor in all in, in what kind of quality of play we've had in the AHL this season? 
I mean, I would definitely say it's a bit of a factor. I mean, not not so much that people didn't belong, but there are plenty of people that were in the NHL, uh, myself included, uh, that didn't really want to be there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my intention was always to play NHL, and it just didn't work out this season, so it was just kind of rough. <clears throat> but I, I would also attribute the fact that maybe there's a depletion of talent just from the game. Um, <laughs> this game is just... It's maddening at times, and I think there's a lot of people that just kind of refuse to really put in the time to play it and get better at it. Um, and it's it's very different from 17. I agree with that 100%. Um, and also, I'm kind of surprised because in the last season, maybe even two, there was a – I noticed there was an influx from, from the Xbox League kind of sifting their way over. Um, and this year, it's, it's still kind of like that. You're seeing a lot more people playing both leagues. But – I'm I'm just surprised that it's I just haven't seen as much of the high scoring as I thought I would. Mm-hmm. But there's a couple there's a couple fun guys to watch still. So. Well, we're going to be getting ready shortly. Barakov uh, was nice enough to uh, provide a stream tonight. Uh, the guys are getting ready in the locker room, so we'll bring you the uh, you know we'll bring you that uh, view soon uh, and get you to the game shortly again. Uh, T Sibs with you tonight. Got Siege and Kepler and Advanced Human helping me bring the game. Glad to be back doing media again. It's been a while and uh, mm-hmm. I'm a little we rusty. You. <laughs> well, I've heard a lot of that today and it was nice to hear, but uh, just good to be calling a game again and, and, and getting a chance to, uh, you know, to see some of these players that I really haven't had much of a chance to look at. You know, we watched some of the games last couple of days and you know, uh, some interesting series that went on. Of course, the other three ended up in in, in four two finals uh, in in the other three series, and so um, you know, some pretty decent competition. Of course, the rain and Barracuda were one that everyone was watching and and hoping that uh, the rain could give the Barracuda a better run, and, <laughs> and they did early on. But uh, certainly, game six last night, the I think the Barracuda had had enough and and put them away <laughs> seven to one in that last game, but. Um, you know, we, we've got a little bit of time while we're waiting here. And let's talk a little bit about about the other upcoming series. You've got San Jose and Manitoba. And, you know, the Moose look like they handled the Admirals fairly well. Uh, Milwaukee played a couple of good games and, you know, gave them a pretty good run. But, uh, again, you know, you look at that roster uh, for the Moose and uh, certainly plenty of talented players there. And, uh, you know, I think they can – they can take a couple of games from San Jose, but do you see them doing any any better than the rain did against uh, San Jose? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I think I think that is the is absolutely the games to watch. Um, the East is you know they're they're fun to watch. They're they're fairly close in skill level in the you know lower end of of what you're looking at. Um, but this is this is obviously the the side you want to watch. Um, it should be it should be pretty cool, but I think the Cooter are just too too good. Their players are too good. They control the pace too well. Uh, two of their lines are phenomenal. One of their lines is decent for the AHL. Um, and if you watch it, they're just they're it, they literally do just look like they're on a different level than the rest right. of the people. I mean, I I could see the Moose taking it to seven, uh, depending on line map. Have home ice advantage, so that's going to be pretty rough. Kepler, have any uh, thoughts on that upcoming series? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Honestly, I think the Moose will give San Jose the best series. They'll see all playoffs long. Um, mm-hmm. They have solid goaltending starting with Dreamy. Um, they have great forwards between um, – I mean, if if he can get his game going, Lobo. Um, you have Nazi. They got Duke. Uh, Brian adores Liz actually had a, a pretty solid season. Um, so I think I think this game definitely has a possibility to go seven. I don't know if I'd if I'd go seven, but and yeah, you know, here's another thing is that although it kind of looked like the Cooter were almost almost gonna have a little bit of trouble, you actually look at the game, you look at who was playing. They had they had ECU in the first one, and they only had two loss. The first one there was there was an ECU or two. The second one was their third line. You can't. It's hard to it's hard to say that teams gonna you know kind of falter when their two lines are so are so strong up front. 
Yeah, I mean, it's there have been teams that have have shown that uh, that San Jose can be beat, though, and I think I think the Moose have have enough talent to to at least take it to seven. But I it, like that. It, well, I mean, when when Dreamy's on, he's he's probably the the top goalie in the AHL. I mean, if if I'm the moose, I run him out there as much as I can, um, and hope that hope that he's on his A game for the night. Yeah, as long as he sticks to his corner. So I've been watching. I like watching good teams, so inevitably I end up watching the Cuda, and and you can tell at least in their first line, uh, user loves loves those wraps. It's like a fetish to him. So <laughs> if you can if you can kind of keep him to the keep him away from that behind the net. Or at least at least keep your your poke checks right by the sides, you know you might you might be able to stop that avenue. But he's you know there's just so many other places they can score from too. And I hate to sound like that guy. Are you, are you telling me that he's more into the raps than uh, than Lobo is? Oh, ah, that's that is a hard call. <laughs> I don't know. They they both love him. such grimy moves. Oh, I hate it so much. <laughs> It almost seems like uh, it's funny when I was watching some of the shout box discussion about San Jose and and their matchups. You know, the first thing a lot of people would ask is, is, is the user pasta line playing? It's almost like people feel like, OK, well, if they're playing, you know, you better just get ready for the next game and <laughs> and not even worry about this one. That's kind of fair, though, isn't it? I would say so. Like the the two of them have so much chemistry at this point. Mm -hmm. Try to stop the one way that you think that they're gonna score, and then they're just gonna score a different way. Like it doesn't right. even matter. Two or they, three different ways. Yeah. They literally have a play that they call the user past a connection. No, and I know exactly what that is. But if you try to stop it, <laughs> then you've got user wrapping it. So it, yeah, doesn't, even, it doesn't matter. The funny thing is that, you know, if you talk to Pasta, I think, you know, early on in 18, and I played with him with some games, he, he didn't seem like the same player he, he was uh, mm -hmm. in 17 early on. And I, and I think he's one of those guys that, yeah, he's a really good player, but I think he also found a way to adapt so that, you know, he can get back on, on track with his game. I think, you know, mm -hmm. that's another part of it, too, is you've got to be able to adapt from release to release. And if you don't do a good job, look, we've all seen – players of every position have a problem next release and and not play the game because they're having such an issue so you know give them credit for i, I think for adapting to it yeah. yeah and there's there's been a couple people that have um that have had some some issues adjusting to it uh, myself included i know talking to philly um you know shortly after release that he was having a little trouble adjusting to it but he seemed to figure it out um, but I think it goes for everybody. I mean, it's it's obviously a different game between the player movements and everything. Um, the animations that, you know, sometimes you may get stuck in. Um, but it's kind of, I think there's there's a learning curve with every game. I agree. I think the goalies kind of take the biggest hits. That's what I noticed the most, the most of the drop-offs is players that have always liked playing goalie and all of a sudden you talk to them and they're like, oh, no, I, don't, I, I moved up to forward or I did this. They just don't, they just can't, they can't figure it out. And then you have random guys who who are playing forward, and they're like, "Oh, I get it. It works." Yeah. And they yep. just they just sit down there and they play amazing. Well, I think uh, you know. I think we've heard a lot of people talk about eighteen, and certainly there are pluses and minuses. I think we hear a lot more minuses in this release than, than we probably would have ever thought we were going to. And uh, you know, it is <laughs> it is a matter of adjusting. And I think uh, you know, I think that's. That's probably played a big key. I mean, look, you know, you, we've got people of all positions uh, on this on this broadcast. So, you know, there there are good and bad things, and and you know, the poke check is good and good or bad depending on what position you're playing from. <laughs> and 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 I think it's ridiculously you know um, overused, but it works, and and you have to, and and unfortunately everybody has to, and and so you know, it's one of those things that you realize, oh, okay. This this one is um, you know this is a lot more active than it, than it was before and it was bad enough before. Now now you really have to you know use it or if you're a foe you've got to find a way to get past it and and uh, you know in a way the smart teams were were good enough to figure out 
um, you know, that they've got to move the puck more in order to, to get around that. And, you know, maybe in some ways it leads to a better play. But, you know, differences in the game every season, uh, you know, and how quickly you pick it up is, is a big part of, uh, I think, success for any team. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I, I, I personally am a fan of dumping. Dumping the puck is – it, and I've, I've heard people say they just don't like it. It's You're just throwing the puck away. But especially when you can get poked so easily from behind, from like 10 feet away from a guy diving randomly, you know, it's, it's almost a safe play to do. And as long as your team knows what you're doing, um, you're, you have good communication with your wingers or centers, depending on which four position, or even the defensemen. If, if they know what they're doing, if you're taking a slapper right past the half, and you got the guys on the other side running down, you're probably going to catch or at least bump the guy and, and take it off or at least have a good chance of it. So yeah, it's... I, I will say as a defenseman, I, I hate when someone knows how to probably play dump and chase because those bouncy pucks to pick them up, it's like a 50-50. And so half the time, I don't get it, even though I, I've beaten them there and then my god men rush. Well, teams are uh, still gathering the uh... – we, we are looking at the uh, stream right now for uh, – what the hell team are we looking at here? We're looking at the stream <laughs> for, the for the Marlies. So they're they're all in there. It looks like they finally got their challenge. So we're going to be getting to this game here shortly, providing that uh, – uh, yes, the other team has shown up. As you can see on your screen now, both teams are, are in there now. And we don't see any uh, differences to the lineup. Looks like we've got the same group of guys that we mentioned before. On Toronto's side, Prodigy, Rob, and Cred up front. Beck, Bronson, Berikoff on defense, and Fishy and Goal. Chow, Boogie, and – well, actually, Boogie Man's in there, which I don't – was he originally in the lineup here? Well, uh, Or that's yep. Boog, right? Is that who Boog is? Did he change yes. his name? Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, that's Boog. There we go. Uh, and Peace and Mafia on defense and uh, Lincoln and Net. So we're getting ready to get this game on the way, Game 7. Hope you uh, enjoyed here. T-Sibs, Kepler – Advanced and Siege here bringing you the game tonight. And we'll uh, be in different combinations bringing you the semifinals and the finals the next two weeks. And um, if time permits, we might even do a, a little, little bit of a show in the next couple of days uh, to talk about the semis. And we'll hopefully have more information for that in, uh, real soon once we uh, figure out what they were going to do this. <laughs> anyway, uh, action is getting now going as... Binghamton trying to force it in. Not love, back the other I way love the D to D passes. That's that's something that I find isn't used nearly enough. But good defensemen, especially guys with with um, chemistry, they they do it real well. Oh. Pass in front, trying to get Chow, but can't connect with him. Now puck back into Toronto's end. So far, it's been mostly Binghamton. Now, finally, Toronto trying to come back out. Prodigy could not connect on a pass. Craig tries to keep it in, but not able to do that. Now, back the other way is Boog. Puck now back out in the neutral zone. We saw a lot of that in a couple of games that we watched last night. Uh, you know, a lot of neutral zone play, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, interceptions and, and puck steals. I'd like to see maybe a little more offense in this one. Yeah, and I think I think looking at this uh, this Binghamton line, I think you're going to see a lot of a lot of boogeyman trying to uh, I guess you could say quarterback the offense. Which looking at his uh, his takeaway giveaway on the year, that might have been the story all year. So yep, absolutely. Four. And you're starting to see a lot more dumping now from from the Marlies, which is if it works, it's good. So far, they're one and one on it, but. It's, it's not something you want to give up right away. Keep keep at it and see how it goes. And I Craig, think yeah, go ahead. talking about it earlier, I think uh, I think you're going to see a lot of a lot of neutral zone trap, maybe a lot of one two two with with pressure from that that guy down low. So we'll the trap is this game. Yeah, every every decent team, especially if you've made it this far, you know how to trap. Good opportunity in close, and the shot by Chow on the short side not going. 
Manipulating behind the net, not able to get it, get anything going. And now the puck out of the zone, come back the other way. Possible two-on-one, but puck just a little too long, and the Devils will control. Again, another lot of neutral zone play, but now in the Marley zone. Around the boards, Chowski keeps it in. Still working behind the net. Good opportunity there for yeah. Boog, but not able to connect. Try to go for the for the wraps or the close-in type moves. I haven't really seen anyone try any cross creases yet, which is interesting. But there's another dump in, so you can you can start to see their strategy for sure. Pinch on that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, this is a this. This is typical of a game seven. You know, early on start out, you don't want to make a big mistake. And so you're going to get those, Around. you know, you're going to get a lot of those kinds of plays and, and where you're not taking a lot of chances. I think we're seeing that right now on both sides. But Serrano trying to dump in, which is, you know, uh, it's good to see. Not a lot of teams do that. No. Yeah, I, f I feel like the, the first period of game seven is a kind of a feeling out stage. Um, if you can say that, trying to figure out how each team's going to attack and um, I'd imagine there'll be more offense come second and third period. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think the defense. It's it's hard to it's hard to pinch and uh, when you're in these tight situations, but I think you might start seeing a bit more, especially near the end of the game. If especially if one person gets a lead, then then you're going to really see some pinching, which is what I, I like to see. Marley's continue to try in the dumps, but they're not able to connect up with anyone on the other side. Now Boog trying to get something going. A couple of opportunities in front, but not able to connect. And back the other way, the Devils trying to regroup. Good hit there by Barakov on Boog. And now Toronto back the other way. Quick shot on net. Finally getting a shot on net, but comes at the end of the period. And a very uneventful first period. No scoring. And uh, we'll get the shots on goal here momentarily. But again, uh, pretty much what we expected at this point, guys. Right? Kind of, you know... Kind of controlled uh, activity. Nobody wanting to make a mistake in, in, you know, period one of game seven. And two teams that are not very well, um, you know, not big offensive output teams. Two shots each for for each team. And so it is uh, not much of a uh, not much of an offensive show here yet. No, and we kind of knew that going in that they don't score too much. So if you have two, offen two teams that aren't strongly offensive with – decent goalies, you're, you're looking at a low-scoring game. That's for sure. I think, uh, think, I think a lot of Toronto's offense this game will uh, kind of spring from what Barakov can do with the puck. You see him trying to carry it up through the trap, um, drawing a penalty there. But I think a lot of their offense kind of comes from Barakov jumping up in the play. So kind of keep an eye on that. Oh, Close good opportunity in front shot. there. Yep. And now the penalty finally called as Berikov was tripped on that play a little bit earlier. And I think that was uh, Boogeyman. So he's going to go off for two and Toronto getting their first power play opportunity. Good shot right off the faceoff, but not able to connect is Beck Bronson. Now on the right side, Cred gets one on net. Good save there by Lakenin. Puck loose in front, almost picked up by Prodigy, but now finally cleared out. And we're getting down to a minute left to go in the power play. At least maybe one more run for Toronto here. And again, Puck, nice play on the lefty by uh, Peace, and he's able to clear it out. Well, this is an interesting little event here. He basically controlled the whole Puck for his whole penalty in their zone, or at least, at least you know, half it. That's, that's pretty impressive. Penalty over. Teams are at even strength now, and Toronto trying to get something going again. Prodigy looking for an opening. You can see a good trap there right on the blue line, and he's having a hard time getting in there, and it's going to be an offside. A lot of frustration there on that play. Yeah, and they, they've kind of abandoned the the dump in this period, at least. Only well, we tried it there, but hit some ankles. Yeah, I think, I think we're seeing the, the frustration come out from a good trap here. Opportunity there on the uh, play from Tough Cuts, trying to get a backhand on the short side, but Fishy there to make the save, and it'll be a face-off deep in the Toronto end as we're getting close to halfway through the second period here. Quick 
quick game so far as there's no score in game seven here. It's a pretty pretty free flowing game here. There was what two face offs in the first first period. Not much there. Beck with a errant pass and Devils trying to capitalize now. Chowski gets it down low to tough. Controlling oh, it went to the again. cross crease, but it was stopped. This is the, that was the first, almost the first time this whole game that there's a real setup. Yeah. yeah. You don't you don't see them really forcing the cross crease, which I mean can be the downfall of a lot of teams because a lot of times it just it leads to a turnover with the other team going the other way. Tough cuts in behind, tries to get it to Boogie, goes out to the point now, and the puck not kept in, but it looks like it's a penalty on Toronto. I'm sorry, on Binghamton now. Toronto on the power play. As you see, only two shots on their first power play. They're 0 for 1 tonight. Barakoff tries to get a shot off. And now the puck face off to the right of Lakenin. Yeah, that was a good backdoor chance. Ooh, oh, wow. Dangerous play. Good pass out front. Tries to get Prodigy, and he gets a shot off, but a little too close, and the angle not good for him on that one, and puck is all the way cleared out. Hitting on the one-minute mark of this power play, second one for Toronto tonight. All the way around. Barakoff tries to get it in, but it looked like it was uh, Boog. I'm sorry, Rob on the left side who was off sides. And it looks looks like Lekkonen's on his game early, so Toronto could be in a bit of trouble. Now dumped in again. Rob trying to get something moving. Now in front, Prodigy could not get a good shot off. Pass in front. Nice pass off to Beck. Gets off a shot and... Lakin and getting a piece of the pad on it and knocking it aside. Another penalty coming up, this one against Toronto. And as they touch, Binghamton will get their first power play opportunity. Now Binghamton off the faceoff. They win it. Brister Big just tip. made, just blocker save made. And Fisher there able to, to get up there and make a save. Now you're starting to see some some extracurricular activity after the whistle. <laughs> a little face washing. Try to get under some people's skin. Prodigy wins the face off and they clear it out. Toronto able to get it out of the zone as we're about a minute and a half left to go in this power play. They're still controlling. Craig tries to throw it up, but now Binghamton comes back with it. Boog. Back up to the top to Mafia. Tries to get over Big to Peace. Block. Goes out of the zone and now cleared out again. 30 seconds left to go on this power play. Left. First one for Binghamton in this game. And an errant pass there in Toronto will control. Kills. This one is over. Teams are at even strength again. We're under five minutes left to go in the second period. No score. Binghamton not getting a lot of good chances on that one. A good quick shot there. By a tough cuts, but not able to connect. And now Toronto will come back out with it. Craig You're trying to, to see in. a little more risky passes from the Devils. Just trying to get anything going. Maybe slip one through. Barakov gets it up the middle. Could not connect Chowski with a good deflection. And now Binghamton brings it in. Again, trying to set up at the points, but... Toronto's coming up to meet them. They're taking on their man at the point properly, and they're not giving up much of an opportunity. Another offsides here as we're getting down to a minute here. Left to go in the second period. No score. A quick game so far. We're looking at a 1-0, 2-1 game, if, if anything, if at least. It was a nice pass right down the middle. They went to try to get it in. Ooh, nice pass. pass right to the center. Prodigy got it over to Rob, but again, good play by Lakin, and he was right in position for it. We're getting down to the last few seconds of this period. Maybe one more chance. Good quick shot in front by Beck Bronson, but again, Lakin in, in position, and for the few opportunities he's had, he's been right where he needs to be for every shot. Yep, and that's, uh, that's been the story on Lakin in all year. Very, very good positionally. 
Yeah, he squares up nice to it. But you, and here's the thing, though. You never really know what's going to happen in the last two, three, maybe five seconds of the period. And I've noticed now twice they just try to shoot it off right right quick. Just see, maybe get a lucky bounce or let EA work its magic. Some quality players on offense, and and uh, and yet it's still 10 shots to six in favor of Toronto, as you see. Uh, you know, Binghamton definitely has had the, the time on attack difference in this one. But, uh, you know, both teams, you know, play good goaltending, good defense. And unless you have tremendous offense, you know, you're going to get this kind of game. And I don't think there's anyone on either of these teams that is particularly good enough to really break a break a proper trap. So it's a lot of a lot of mid ice area movement, a little west and east movement. And again, Binghamton trying to do it that way. Now as we come the other way, you watch that play between the, the center line and the blue line. That's where a lot of it's coming. Good pass in front. Nice pass there by Prodigy to try and set up Craig, but he's not able to connect with him. Now back the other way is Binghamton. Boog not able to control again. Not able to get it cleanly in the zone. Toronto back the other way. Nice dump into the, to the right side. Cred, he puck, he puck in front, nobody there to pick it up, and now back the other way. Binghamton, that one is broken up, and Bronson will control. Now Barakoff trying to figure out how he's going to get in the zone. Can't even get it in there cleanly. Yeah, Devils are definitely struggling trying to get it in. They're chopping. They're doing pretty much everything they can, but they're getting caught. Now the Marley's coming back down. It was a good quick pass to Rob, but not quick enough as the Devils' defense is there. Now back the other way. A good rush and a good opportunity there. That was a good two-on-one. -on -one. He beat his defenseman, but again, the goalies are tough who cuts. they are for a reason. Yeah, Tough Cuts was able to get past his defender, Bronson, on that side, but not able to get it off a clean enough shot. And again, even if you do get a good opportunity here, the way that these goaltenders are playing, it's going to be awfully tough to score. I think it's probably going to end up being a rebound, to be honest with you. They're going to start maybe shooting. Oh, a big giveaway in front. Good opportunity there. Not able to connect with anyone. Tough Cuts got it out from behind the net, but nobody out front. And now, again, good good chance there for Boog, but not able to find anybody there. And now cleared back in again. We're halfway through the third period. and This game seven, no score. Toronto and Binghamton. And play has been... Uh, Pretty pretty steady. A lot of neutral zone trap, like watching the uh, New Jersey Devils back in the 90s. Uh, it just uh, not an overly exciting game, but a defensive struggle <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah not, not many clean entries in either zone. and just Boog, quick shot in front, looking for the rebound, as you said. And Tough Cut's trying to find an opportunity there. But Barakov controls, gets it out of the zone. Eight minutes left to go in the third period on an offside here. And again, yeah, I mean, you got to, you know, if you're going to do the dump in, you've got you've to gotta tell somebody else, the other winger, hey, you, you need to, uh, when I tell you to go, you need to go. Otherwise, those dump ins don't mean anything. Yeah, you need to get on your horse. And also something I haven't, I haven't seen that everyone seems to hate when they're playing computers is that no one hugs people against the boards anymore. So when you dump it in, if they get it, people just kind of – it may go for a little bit of hit, but mostly pokes more than anything. If, if you start hugging it up, slow that play down, you might be able to bring another guy in and get that poke off and uh, get something going. Stay with it, stay with it. Toronto trying to make something out of this, looking for a drop of the puck. Now able to get a good opportunity there for Rob, but that shot is blocked and now cleared out by the Devils. Siege, are we seeing a very similar defensive style on both sides here? Because I, I can't tell much of a difference. I mean, it's just a trap. <laughs> like, both teams are just trapping, and they're doing a really good job. Um, there's just, like, not much offense that's being able to ooh, to happen. Um, I mean, even the forwards, like, if it gets into the offensive zone, the forwards, the defensive forwards are, are coming down and playing defense if they need. Barakov able to get it in. Good opportunity there for Rob as he's able to get a shot off, but again... Short side, not much there. Now back the other way. Can Boog get past his defender? He can't, but Barakov trips him. 
And we're going to get another penalty here on Toronto. Binghamton will get a shot here ending the third period. And it looks like, uh, yeah, Barakoff is uh, gone off here as we get uh, his bird's eye view from the penalty <laughs> box. Best seat in the house. And it is going to take one of those uh, one of those accidental plays. We saw Chowski, one of the last good opportunities. Puck jumped out in front, and he was able to get a shot off. But it seems like that's the kind of thing that's going to happen because no one's able to get a set play going. Like it advances, I, I definitely think it's going to be a rebound or potentially a defenseman gets caught and just beat two on one, and they get one in. 40 seconds left to go in the third here, and the power play still going for Binghamton as they have to regroup in their own zone, start all over again. Back up on the left side. Boom, but not able to get goals. Yeah, and what's, what's nice about this game, at least, is that from, from what I'm seeing, no one's really getting really lucky bounces, or it's pretty evenly, it's pretty evenly yeah. matched here. Getting down to the last... 10 seconds here. Binghamton still on the power play. Toronto trying to get out of their zone, at least clear it out. And they're able to do that. And that'll probably be the end of the third period here as the teams will go scoreless after three. Yeah, that, that's, about, that's about right. That's kind of what we thought. Just, you know, fans are sitting there eating popcorn, kind of bored. <laughs> but again, you know, again, when watching the games last night, we saw a lot of the same style, and and uh, you know you can win this way, but you eventually have to score, and you know against teams that have a lot more offense, you know they don't they're not a one trick pony. They tend to find a way, one way or another, to get the puck in the zone more often. It just hasn't happened for either team tonight. Overtime yeah, starts. Seconds left. And the penalty kill on overtime. And you see Binghamton has off. a quick opportunity. Pass in front. Nothing there. And Barakoff back out now to help his team. They're at even strength. And Bronson looking to find someone to pass to. Gets it up on the left wing. Rob still holds on to it. Gets it down low for Prodigy. Back in front for Rob. Puck is loose. Oh, wow. wow. Covered up by Lakin oh. and he'll hold. Nice little give and go action. Worrying. I think it's going to have to be one of those goals that wins it, though. And the face off deep in the Binghamton zone. One there. Rob was able to get a stick on it, but not able to control it. Now it's back out again. Now Rob yeah. on the left side. Looking for the prodigy or back to the point, but loses the puck. Good play there by tough cuts and now he'll control up over the blue line play broken up and now coming back the other way is prodigy with the puck the marley's attacking flipped in front of the net in front of the net and barakov got a cup between his pads has to sit on it and hold it that was one of the few face-off wins that just were clean i've noticed a lot of them have been pretty grimy a lot of tie-ups Try to keep it safe and run in for it. Devils dump it in, but Toronto back the other way. And if there's one thing for sure I'm seeing is a lot of slow play trying to enter into the zone, but now back the other way. It's tough cuts. Shot with is goes wide off the deflection, and uh, Boog not able to get it there. Now back the other way. Prodigy for Toronto. That one broken up by Peace, and now back the other way come the Devils. Chowski gets hit but still controls. Now finally loses it to Barakov. Yeah, defense are really trying to move it up. Nice little dump in there. No one, no one, no communication, I guess. No one really knew what's happening. But you're seeing a lot of the defense trying to do it themselves, which is okay. But the offense classes are just – they have better hands. They're, they're more equipped for it. Well, then you're also bunching players up at the blue line if the defensemen are bringing it up, because then you got three forwards who have to wait for something to happen. Absolutely. Nice little in-between pat or deke to himself. Try to go for a wide cross, but... Good play by fan. Chowski to try and make something happen there. It's, it's, it's tough to get anything going, but uh, tough cut's a little too wide. He might have had a good opportunity. Puck is loose in front. Still loose, and not wide able to get it off. What? Just Cred. Had that one wow. right on the doorstep. Wow. It could not pound it home. Use your 
second hand. <laughs> Apparently, Craig getting some instruction on how to uh, shoot the puck. <laughs> and the puck now outside the zone. Eight minutes left to go in this overtime. First overtime. It'll, it'll go longer if need be. Yeah, I have a feeling. Now back the other way is Boog. The outlet passes, to me, are just not happening quickly enough. I mean, I feel like Rob should have already had the puck about 10 seconds ago. Yeah, you got to I mean, find your there, centers. There are times with the trap where, you, as a defenseman, you just have to skate it up, though, um, and have your winger replace you because there, there's just no pass open. If you look almost every time, too, they're all, they're all out of the zone. All the wingers, the centers, everyone's just moving out. And hoping for the best. If the center starts sitting back more, keep they'll pull in one of their defense, one of their uh, forwards. You might have a chance of, of finding some open space. But as of now, it's just defense trying to trying to move it up themselves. Good hit on Barakov to take the puck off the stick of Boog, and now he comes back the other way. And and, and Siege brings up a good point. If if the defenseman is going to run it, then somebody needs to drop back and and make some room up front and to cover on defense. And I, you just don't really see that happening. You're getting a you know, you're getting a log jam of players right at the blue line. Yeah, no, I, I don't see Fords getting open. And then I don't see them making any space when the defenseman skates up so that it's just like a map just hanging on the new. <laughs> Puck back in the zone. Under two minutes now to go in this first overtime. Berikoff now may have some room to move, but that gets poked off his stick. Good play there by Mafia. Now the... Puck still in the devil zone, and they're trying to move it out. Pass Big broken interception. up. Nice pick up by Craig. Yeah. Trying to get a little fancy. creative yeah. in between the leg pass. <laughs> Not able to connect up there, Prodigy. Now the other way. Chowski tries to get it in front. He can't get anything going. Barakoff the other way. There you go. Fuck yeah, let's go. Now Craig in front. Good move. Gets a shot straight on, though. And Lickinen able to make that save. One to 14, as you see, left to go in this first overtime. 16 saves. Perfect record so far. Big tie-up, but... Oh, they kept it in the zone. Tried to do a little back backdoor pass there, but didn't work. Craig had Prodigy. Prodigy could not get off a shot, and at that moment, Lickinen was in trouble, but they could not make anything of it. Good wraparound attempt there by Boog, but Fishy there to make a save. Under a minute left to go in this overtime. Rob the other way, Craig, good shot. Good anticipation by Lakin and though, makes the glove save. He had a wide open left side and just just went right. He's been all over the place and watching him. And he loses sight of that puck. He's fucking back and forth. Prodigy wins it back to Bronson. Gets it down low. Good shot there. Good pass and good shot by Rob. But again, Lakin and saw that. Another face off deep in the Binghamton zone, face off right on to Lakin in, but he makes the save. Now coming out the other way, the Devils had some numbers. There's a big pinch. Puck, puck in front, no good opportunity there for tough cuts as he was able to get himself across the blue line pretty quickly, but uh, good play coming back on defense and nice save by Fishy. Another tie up in the Marley's zone, but the Marley's got it out. Barakov coming up to the last 20 seconds of this period. Rob not able to control. Now back the other way. Tough cuts. He gets knocked off the puck. I think that was the first hit of the game. Chowski can't get it in. Puck dumped in. Coming down to the last few seconds of this overtime period. Can Rob get anything going? Gets it across to Cred. Tries to get it in, in the middle for Prodigy. Can't find a connection and Overtime period number two comes up now as still no score after four periods here. And let's just go back quickly and talk about what you were saying earlier, Siege. Just, you know, just if you're going to if you're gonna let the defense bring it up, you, you've got to rotate players. You've got to circle around a little bit, keep them guessing. If, if you've got five guys hitting the blue line, it's just not going to work. Nope, there's just no room. Um... Basically, the defense can just collapse on you because they know that you can't make a pass because no one else is open. Everyone is just standing in a line. So um, I think that that greatly explains why we're 
going into the second OT, 0-0. You can't really get the puck in clean. Second overtime starts. Chowski trying to find a connection. Can't. Gets it back. He gets tripped, and there'll be another Toronto nice. penalty coming up. Golden opportunity for Binghamton right now. Can they connect? Just clearly, starting the overtime. Clearly the biggest kill of the year. Chowski wins it. Boo controls. Down low to Chowski out front. Puck is deflected. He was looking for tough cuts but couldn't find them. And now the Devils start over again. Boog in front of Chowski. Tries to get it for tough cuts, but a good deflection again by Bronson. And the puck's clear. Good defense, you know, for all the offensive struggles. Good defense by both teams. Absolutely. They're really – the, and they've been forcing the down low a lot. Uh, this is the first time on their power play they actually passed it back to the defenseman. I think if they start using them a bit more, they might have a chance. But there it is again. They broke up the play on the out, and they're coming back in. Chowski couldn't find tough cuts. Now back the other way is Toronto. As the teams are now full strength, another penalty kill for Toronto. An opportunity missed for the Devils. Now Chowski loses the puck, Drop back. Now Craig has it. Looking to maneuver in. He's got numbers. Gets a puck on net. But good kick out by Lakening gave Rob no opportunity. And now the Devils trying to clear it out. Chowski bumps into his own player. Yeah, they're, this trap's pretty good. They're, they're trying, but everything they do just ends up in the other guy's stick. Kicked in by Craig, looking for Rob on the other side, but Puck is cleared out. And now Tough Cut's coming the other way, dumps it in. One hard, one hard. So quick pass there. Now in front for Chowski, and he scores. There we go. Great pickup there hard. by Tough Cuts, finding Chowski wide open in front of the net. And that is it. Second overtime win for the Devils. A two-overtime win in this game. And the Devils will go on to the semifinal rounds uh, in what will be a an interesting uh, semifinal on both sides. But uh, this game, again, maybe not uh, – a, an exhibition in how to play offense necessarily, but certainly one for defense. And, and when, when you have good goaltending, this is the kind of game you wind up with. Uh, again, a one nothing Devils win. Chowski on that one with the game winner and a good pickup. And it was another one of those. All of a sudden, uh, you know, a, a puck pickup, a good quick pass out front. And uh, it looked like the, that. It looked like these guys were doing a little bit more of that, trying to move the puck quicker, trying to get it out in front a lot quicker. And finally, it connected. Yeah, it seemed like a lot. A lot of those plays started with quick passes in their defensive end, and coming down to the offensive zone, uh, made one one good pass to the front, and that's what ended it. So you see Chowski from Tough Cuts for the game winner. As you're looking at the final game stats, and again, uh, interesting game, interesting defensive game. Pretty much what we expected out of these guys, and you know there there were several one goal games in this entire series. You know, there was the game six, game five. Uh, yeah, they were like uh, four games in – actually probably five games in this series that were one goal games. So uh, certainly not a shock that it wound up this way in the end. No, I definitely expected a low-scoring game, not a uh, double OT zero zero game, but I'm not too surprised about how this, this ended. And we'll see if we can try and get Chowski in on this one. But, you know, again, give us uh, – you know, give us some of your take on this, uh, Kep, as a defenseman. You know, how both teams play defense in this one. And, and uh, you know, what could either team have done a little bit different? I mean, we talk about Toronto losing this one. You know, what could they have done different at all in this game to get more opportunities? Um, uh, defensively, I mean, that, those were probably two of, the, two of the better traps I've seen in an LG game. Um, they stuck to their lanes, and, and once somebody got onto the puck, they kind of jumped right on them. Um, they were quick to get to the puck in their corner and, and try and clear it out. Um, if, if you're Toronto, I mean, they, they played a good game. They, they, they forechecked hard. They played a very good trap at times better than Binghamton. But um, honestly, I, I don't know if maybe there's anything that could have been done better besides, like we talked about earlier, a, a forward cycling back. You know, maybe give Barakov, who's a who's a pretty pretty good offensive defenseman, a chance to 
to skate into the zone, try and create something. So, you know, for the next round, does, uh, does Charlotte pay attention to any of this? Do they care about what Toronto was able to do against them? Or, you know, is that, is that something that they can't concern themselves with because it's, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's the way that these two teams play, but, you know, really not necessarily the way Charlotte plays their game. Do they, do they try and do a little bit more trapping? Do, you know, how, do they make any adjustments at all in their game? Do they need to? Well, um, they'll know that they'll know that the Marlies, or sorry, that um, the Devils will will play that trap game. Um, but you you and you can really tell, especially you're you're playing a, you're playing a video game at the end of the day. So offense will overpower defense majority of the time if you can if you have the hands. So if you're really offensive, you'll eventually you'll break through. Someone will make a mistake, and you'll you'll get a goal or two. I mean, from the, the games yeah. that I watched, though, of the Checkers, like, I feel like they've got one line that scores, and then <laughs> the others, they're just not very offensively powered. So That's the true. top might vary the second and third line, and sure, you can have your top line three by scoring four or five, but you've got to win four to win the series. I, I think if you're Charlotte, I mean, you don't you don't tailor your game to any specific opponent. I think you just you stick to your game, um, and what's what's been throughout, you know, the first and second rounds. Uh, I think when you try and other teams you watched, I kind of think that's when you get in trouble. Maybe. I, I mean, personally, I would love to never watch another double trap game. <laughs> um, <laughs> that that I was at times brutal. Um, so, so I hope that the checkers don't do it as well, but I mean, I also think the devils probably did it because it's game seven and sweaty. So like everyone's going to come out trapping. Right. Well, we've got, let's just quickly, before we, uh, we get going here, we would like to have gotten Chowski on here, but he's uh, not much of a talker outside of the shout box. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it'd be nice to get somebody else on, but we don't, we don't have any other, uh, anybody else here. I think that we're able to talk to from the shout box. So. We'll just we're gonna wrap this up and, and just talk about the upcoming game the upcoming series that we have coming up. You know, we talked a little bit about Charlotte uh, and about the Devils. Obviously, we've talked a bit about the Devils and the Marlies uh, a good deal tonight. But um, you know who they have. You know the, the team they're going up against uh, with Charlotte. You know uh, again uh, a lot of names, uh, some of which you know, but quite a few of them who are uh, you know who are relatively new to the AHL and who are just doing. Uh, tremendous work over there, and then they wind up having uh, a goaltender like Flyers in there, who's five and zero in the playoffs so far this season. And again, if you get enough good play from everybody else, and you've got Flyers in in most of the games in net, you have a good shot of uh, of getting past and making the uh, the Eastern, uh, you know, being the Eastern Conference uh, representative in in the Cup game. Uh, you know, do you see any reason why the Devils have a uh, a prayer? Uh, against uh, Charlotte, you know what? What is it? What is their opportunity to get past the checkers? I don't think they're going to score very much, to be honest with you. And as long as is like that's that's like, the only thing you can take out of this game is that if Charlotte's watching, is you know both these teams don't don't really have the hands to beat a trap. So if you can if you can stop them and you have you your dump works or you start getting some lucky bounces. This whole game could have been completely different with three lucky bounces. It could have been, it could have been a whole different game. You never really know. So that you got, you got to hope for it. Shoot low, go for rebounds, kind of get grimy, do those disgusting wraparounds that no one really particularly likes to see, but are effective. And You're so anti-rap. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so anti-rap. It's infuriating. And on the other side, you know, we've got, uh, you know, you've got this um, Moose Barracuda matchup coming up. And again, you know, from from day one, when this Barracuda team was put together, uh, you know, I don't think anyone thought that that anyone else was going to win this championship, <laughs> but them. Uh, but the Moose, you know, again, the Moose have have a, you know, they have a decent squad. You know, you you can't you can't ever count anybody out, and. You know, plenty of good players over there. Again, a lot of guys that we know, you know, Nanzi, JMM, Lobo, who we've seen, you know, do incredibly well uh, for the last couple of seasons in the AHL. 
and, uh, you know, Dupe, Brian, Adores Liz, uh, you know, just a lot of good players, a lot of – and some of those guys I mentioned who were holdovers for last season. Uh, you know, a good, solid squad from top to bottom, and then you've got Dreamy and, and even Arch in net who, you know, didn't get a lot – has only played two games in the playoffs, but, you know, he has experience in these big games. Uh, Dreamy at 6-1-1, one, and one, obviously – is the man they're probably going to go with for the most part, but you know, with you know, with without really, uh, you know, as far as I could see, a weak line anywhere and two good goaltenders, Manitoba can make this very difficult on San Jose. Absolutely, and you you look at some of the players. If you look at Lobo, you know, two seasons before and last season, over a hundred points both times. You know, Jack Dupe, same, not not nearly as high, but you're looking at eighty points. This team can score, and the Cuda can score. So you're, I don't think you're going to see what you just saw. I think you're going to see some higher scoring games, definitely. Um, but when you start seeing some NHL quality players, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to stop when they can. Even even if you are pulling the trap, they'll they'll walk through it a bit. So it gets a little gets a little sloppy. Who else has? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Cap. What do you what do you what do you feel about the West? Do you think it's locked up, or do the Moose have a shot? I think the Moose have a shot. shot. Yeah. He knows how to say Kepler and Siege wound up answering for you, so we'll, <laughs> we'll give you a chance to talk now. He's my second time. Uh, <laughs> looking top to bottom, I think the Moose have a chance. They they score. They play good defense. Um, and they have a good backstop and dreamy. Um, like I said, if if the Moose win the series, I think it goes seven. Um, but I think this could be the most fun series to watch throughout the whole playoffs. Absolutely. And whoever wins this one is, unless some, something crazy happens, is is kind of the shoe in for the win. This is this is the final that we've all yeah. Been no, kind of this is for. the final. I, I would say. <laughs> Yep. So, so, so you definitely again, I, and I know you've been kidding about it, and I'll let you say it for real on the air, Siege. But oh, uh, yes, East bad, West good. <laughs> it, uh, you, Back to life. Kidding about that, obviously, but uh, not so much of a kid because I think you you really do mean it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think that the baby sins could have had a chance, but <laughs> they got knocked out of the playoffs. So, um, I mean, the East teams. Like, they're not bad, and there are plenty of people on, you know, these teams I like. They're good players, but then I look at the Moose and the Cuda roster, and it, it's just not fair. <laughs> like, it, it, they're, they're in a different league, basically. Yeah, that's a fair way to say it. They're in a different league. All right. Well, uh, you know, we're uh, going to be carrying these games next week again. Uh, we're going to have the two series, Devils and Checkers on the east side and Moose and Barracuda uh, for the Western Conference Finals. Games will start on Sunday. We're going to carry all the games, and uh, depending on how LG scheduled them, hopefully they stagger them as they typically do, and we'll be on for, for bringing you uh, all the games and all the action next week. And, of course, we'll be back for the finals the week after and bring you all the games there as well. And, and again, uh, we're going to – try to do a, uh, a show. I think we're going to do a show at some point this week. Uh, if not tomorrow, it, it'll be one of the next couple of days, maybe even on Friday. Probably more than likely Thursday or Friday, but we'll, we'll get you that information on the LG site uh, You know, a little later on. Um, any final thoughts about, about the game we saw tonight? I mean, I, I look at this and uh, again, as we said, we, not much different than what we expected, not much different than what we saw in some of the other games in this series. Uh, very defensive teams who, uh, you know, who just played that trap to a T. Uh, as uh, I think we've all kind of hinted, maybe not the most exciting style, but but one that showed where you can be successful in playing the trap, obviously. But um, you know, we'll we'll see if they can still do that next week uh, when they take on the checkers. I would highly recommend that if that is the game that you're willing to play, and both teams know that. Everyone should just start drinking and really loosen up the play a bit. <laughs> I, I, you guys are wrong. I was completely on the edge of my seat that entire game. It was amazing. <laughs> just so many offensive chances. Really exciting stuff. There, were, you know what? <laughs> to be fair, though, there were some good ones. There no, were some there, there were. Fan 
good chances actually, but the goalies just read them. Yeah, good goalies that, was... that just shut it down. And there was no there was no EA goals, which yeah. I would have loved to actually see while talking about a game because oh DDA, <laughs> it's a thing. All right, we got a couple of good series coming up next week. Again, guys, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me tonight, and uh, we'll have uh, we'll have some more fun next week. Siege and Kepler and Vance joining me tonight. Thanks for your your uh, call tonight, and we've got some uh, interesting games coming up next week, folks. We'll be on again, as I said, bringing you games one and two for both of the series on Sunday, and we'll also try and do some sort of a pregame. Uh, either tomorrow or Friday, we'll get we'll get information on on that as soon as we uh, decide which day we're going to do that. So, uh, anyway, thanks for joining us again. Final score in double overtime: Devils one and the Marlies nothing. Devils win the series in seven games. They'll take on Charlotte. Meanwhile, the Moose and the Barracuda will face off in the West to uh, to get to the Cup again. T-Sib saying so long. Thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll talk to you again in a couple of days. <laughs>